Hi, and welcome to the first episode of Particle Physics Brick by Brick. In this series of short videos, we're planning on describing as much of particle physics as we can through the medium of Lego. In this introductory video, we're just going to start talking about the particles and the forces that make up our universe. At the heart of particle physics is a school of thought called atomism, which began in ancient Greece but really found its modern form in 1803 with John Dalton. The idea is that everything around us is made from small solid spheres. Each of the different chemical elements are different sized solid spheres with different properties, but each of these solid spheres are indivisible. That's where the word atom comes from, atmos, for the ancient Greek meaning uncuttable. But that all changed in 1897 when the electron was discovered by J.J. Thompson. The electron was much, much lighter than the lightest known atom of hydrogen, and therefore it must have come from within the atom itself. And in 1911, after painstaking work by Hans Geiger and Edward Marsden, Ernest Rutherford declared that there was an atomic nucleus, where most of the mass of the atom was concentrated, but also all of its positive electric charge. Later, in 1917 and following in 1932, it was discovered that the nucleus was made from smaller things still, Protons with a positive charge and neutrons with a neutral charge. Suddenly, we had the full gambit of particles that we needed to explain the entire world around us. With protons, neutrons and electrons, we could explain all of the elements on the periodic table. The world is nice and simple then. It's made from just three particles. That's it. That's the end of our particle physics lesson. But wait. It wasn't long before things started getting complicated again as particles that weren't protons, neutrons or electrons started showing up in experiments around the world. They were seen in things like cosmic rays, but later on in particle accelerators. So suddenly we were going from a simple model where there were three fundamental particles to new particles being discovered on a regular basis. What was going on? And so there was obviously a need for further simplification. And that simplification came in 1968 with the discovery of quarks. Now, the word quark doesn't really mean anything. Murray Gelman, one of the progenitors of the idea of quarks, had the sound quark in his head, or rather quark for Americans. And essentially, he just wanted to call these things the quarks, but he needed a word as well. And he found the word quark in James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake. It's a rather thick book, but the one line you're interested in is three quarks for muster marks. And so this is where we find ourselves. This is our picture of the universe with three fundamental particles. Now, the fundamental particles that make up the proton and the neutron is the up quark and the down quark. And to make a proton, you need to put two up quarks on top of a down quark. To create a neutron, you need to put one up quark on top of two down quarks. And then these particles will have the properties that you expect them to have. The proton will be positive one in electric charge. The neutron will be zero in electric charge. And then, of course, there's the electron. Also discovered later on in the 20th century were other particles called neutrinos. Now, these are fundamental particles, but they don't make up the atoms around us. We will talk about them in a later video. But for some reason, we don't know why, nature also chose, in infinite wisdom, to not only give us these subset of particles, which are all we need to build a universe, but she also gave us two further sets of particles. Now, these particles are pretty similar to the first set of particles in that they have similar properties like electric charge. For instance, the up quark has the same charge as the charm quark and the top quark. The main difference between the particles on the far left and the far right is their mass. As we go from up to charm to top, the quarks get more massive. The same with the down type quarks. The down quark has the same electric charge as the strange and the bottom quark. The only difference between these three particles is that they are more massive. And the electron also has two heavier versions of itself, the muon and then the tau, with exactly the same electric charge, just more mass. And the neutrino also has copies of itself as well. Right now, the exact colour of the quarks has no significance. Just be aware that the quarks do have this colour, whereas the leptons do not. There's more about this in the colour charge video. Unlike us, these fundamental building blocks don't have free will. They are constrained as to what they can do by the forces of nature. Now, the most familiar force of nature to you is probably gravity, because it keeps your feet planted to the Earth. It also keeps the Earth orbiting around the Sun, and our solar system orbiting in our Milky Way galaxy. But the thing is, gravity is rather weak. 
The strength of the force of gravity is dependent upon the amount of mass there is around. And the thing is, planets, stars and galaxies are rather massive, but particles aren't. Particles are really, really light. And because of that, and the fact that gravity is so weak, we actually ignore gravity altogether when we're talking about particle physics. The other force you're likely to be familiar with is electromagnetism, because like gravity, it has an infinite range, and that's why we can experience it day to day. It's responsible for keeping electrons in orbit around the nucleus in the atom, but it's also responsible for a number of other different interactions, which we'll discuss in another video. The strong force, which is responsible for keeping quarks together in particles like protons and neutrons, has a range about the size of a medium atomic nucleus, around about 10 to the minus 15 meters. And the weak nuclear force, which is responsible for the transformation of particles, such as is seen in radioactive beta decay, has a range about the size of the radius of a proton itself, much smaller, around about 10 to the minus 18 meters in size. Now together, these four forces of nature allow us to do various different things with the particles, but they can't stray outside of these rules. Each of the building blocks can interact with one or more of these four fundamental forces. Alongside nature's building blocks are messenger particles, and these messenger particles are exchanged between the building blocks for the purpose of influencing these fundamental forces. These particles are called bosons. The messenger particles of the strong interaction are called gluons because they glue the quarks together to form protons, neutrons and other particles. And you'll notice that the gluons are colourful, as are the quarks. That is to do with what we call strong charge or colour charge. There's more on colour charge in another video. Next is the photon. The photon is the messenger particle of the electromagnetic force. You'll notice all of the quarks, plus the electron and its heavier versions of muon and tau, are highlighted. That is because all of these particles have electric charge, and therefore interact via the electromagnetic force, which means they can pass photons between them. Notice though, the neutrinos cannot. They have no electric charge, so they can't interact with any other particle using photons. They can't feel the electromagnetic force. The only interaction and force that the neutrinos can experience is that of the weak force. Now this weak force, as you can see, encompasses all of the particles. And it's a very interesting and tricky force to deal with. And it causes changes between particles. And this complication can be seen just by looking at the number of different particles that is involved in exchanging weak force messages. There's three there. But what's really complicated is, two of them have got an electric charge as well, and so they also interact with the photon. Anyway, more on that in a future video. Now there is one more boson which I haven't talked about. That is the Higgs boson. Now the Higgs boson doesn't exchange messages for the forces, it is in itself its own boson. But what it does do is it provides mass to some of these particles. You'll notice I've highlighted most of them apart from the gluons and the photon. The reason for this is that the gluons and the photon actually don't have a mass. Now it's not known if all of these particles, all of the 12 building blocks, actually gain their mass from the Higgs or not. In fact, actually there's a lot of debate as to whether the neutrinos gain their mass in various different ways. All of these 12 building blocks, all of the force carrying bosons and the Higgs boson together are known as the standard model of particle physics. And this is what we're going to try and explain in future videos. Thanks for listening. If you would like to know more, subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on social media for more information. You could also buy the book. Particle Physics Brick by Brick is available through online retailers and many local bookstores. Other languages are also available. If you follow this bit.ly link, you can also get access to lots of educational resources and information on where you can get your hands on LEGO to play along. LEGO is a registered trademark of the LEGO Group, which does not sponsor, authorise or endorse these videos in any way.